You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, praised the interest that the World Bank Group attaches to combating the coronavirus COVID-19 and the bank's rapid response to allocating the necessary support to countries and the efforts of limiting the spread of the virus. The minister noted the importance of international cooperation to address the repercussions of this virus and mitigate its effects at various levels. This came in the statement delivered by the Minister of Finance and National Economy before the Development Committee on behalf of the countries of the Arab Group and the Maldives, which is represented by the Kingdom of Bahrain. Sheikh Salman pointed to the importance of international cooperation to address the repercussions of this virus and reduce the digital gap in order to achieve the sustainable development goals and the goals of the World Bank Group to end poverty, enhance shared prosperity and ensure the speedy deployment of the COVID-19 vaccines, especially for low-income countries or regions with fragile and conflict-affected situations. In this regard, the minister emphasized the greater role that the International Finance Corporation, the IFC, and the International Investment Guarantee Agency, the MIGA, could play in providing providing support to the private sector in overcoming the main challenges of trade and financing to exceed this exceptional period. The minister said that the Arab group welcomes the call of the World Bank Group, the International Monetary Fund and G20, led by Saudi Arabia, to extend the debt relief period for low- and middle-income countries. The Labor and Social Development Minister Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan received the Good Ward Society Chairman and Arab Union for Voluntary Work President Hassan Mohammed Bouhaza, who handed over to him the His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Award for Voluntary Work. The Labor Ministry was announced among the winners of this year's edition of the award during the virtual distribution ceremony. The Minister congratulated His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa on the success of the final ceremony of the 10th edition of this award, lauding his role in promoting voluntary work values following the authentic approach of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa. Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. He also hailed His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali's directives to honor national frontliners of the fight against the novel coronavirus COVID-19 in recognition of their efforts and tremendous contributions to alleviating the impact of the pandemic in the kingdom. He also paid tribute to the Good Word Society's management for its distinguished efforts to ensure the success of the award since its inception. Hamidan expressed the Labor Ministry's pride in being among the honorees of this year's edition, affirming that it will carry on its efforts in the service of all social segments in effective partnership with state departments and civil society organizations. Buhaza lauded the Labor Ministry's support for NGOs' national efforts with an effective community partnership. He also hailed the Labor Ministry's support for the Good Word Society's voluntary and charity work practices. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan, affirmed Bahrain's keenness under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the support of His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister, His Royal Highness, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to support citizens and boost their productivity by providing 15 indirect support programs and raising the overall annual subsidies. He added that the Ministry of Labor and Social Development is also working on motivating the youth to engage in the field of entrepreneurship as this approach approach has proven the feasibility of the Kingdom's initiatives to tackle unemployment and ensure the ability of the labor market to generate more employment opportunities. The minister pointed out 15 indirect programs including educational, health, electricity and water services, foodstuff, social insurance, a monthly salary support for Bahraini employees in the private sector when recruited through the National Employment Program, housing, oil byproducts and care for the elderly. The Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, Hal Al Ansari, has affirmed that the royal directives and women related decisions Bahrain witnessed recently reflected the kingdom's status as an advanced and civilized country, supporting women and further engaging them in the national efforts to combat coronavirus COVID 19 and its impact on the community and the economy. Al Ansari pointed out that the SEW, under the presidency of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, is monitoring the positive impact of those directives and decisions on Bahraini women and family stability. She pointed out that while many countries had faced big challenges, Bahrain remained immune of that thanks to the determination and support of citizens and institutions during the pandemic on one hand and the law's decisions and procedures taken on the other. The SEW Secretary General indicated that the Council will continue following up closely on the needs of Bahraini women in light of developments caused by the pandemic. She also stressed the Council's resolve to maintain cooperation with all relevant parties in light of the National Empowerment Plan to further boost the potentials of Bahraini women and enhance their capabilities to strike a balance between work and family demands in order to further promote family stability and boost welfare. Bahrain has witnessed the issuance of quality decisions
decisions that support gender balance while taking into account the situation of women in light of the new conditions caused by the pandemic. This has positively reflected on the sustainability of women's performance of their family and professional responsibilities, facilitating their access to health services, enhancing their psychological stability and coexistence with the new situation and maintaining family and social stability. The Deputy Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources at the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, Dr. Nabil Mohamed Bulfet, met with a number of companies licensed to work in the field of marine sand extraction, where he affirmed that marine sand constitute a sustainable national wealth. He noted the government's keenness on the protection of the marine environment of the Kingdom of Bahrain, based on the government directions to preserve the marine wealth due to its importance for further generations, stressing that the agency is determined to tighten control to prevent any violations of the ministerial decision. During the meeting. Abu Fatah informed the companies of the Decree 190 of 2020 issued by the Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning regarding determining the government zone for the extraction of marine sand. The decision stipulates that the northeastern region of the territorial waters of Bahrain be determined to extract marine sand for construction and building purposes only and it is prohibited to extract it for burial purposes. Abu Fatah also highlighted boundaries of the marine area designated for the work of companies in addition to listening to the observations and suggestions of companies operating in the field which enhances the partnership and coordination between the two sides. The Director General of the General Department of Investigation and Forensic Evidence stated that in the framework of following up the implementations of the decision issued by the Coordination Committee to prevent the spread of the coronavirus in coordination with the Ministry of Health, took legal measures and closed a number of tourist restaurants and cafes in the capital government after they committed a number of violations. He affirmed the continuation of field campaigns to ensure that the required precautionary measures are taken and that everyone is adhering to the decisions of the Coordination Committee to combat the spread of the virus. The head of registration and licensing of the Coast Guard has met with the Director of Ports and Maritime Affairs at the Ministry of Transportation and Communication. The meeting reviewed mechanisms to transfer the tasks of licensing small boats from the Interior Minister to the Ministry of Transportation and Communication as per Decree Law 32 of 2020. It was agreed that a final plan and time frame be set for the tasks transferring in which the Ministry of Transportation and Communication will start receiving applicants from November the 1st. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 3,612 with 408 recoveries and 371 registered new, death, new cases as well as three new deaths. 95 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 267 are contacts of active cases and nine are travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules and avoid public spaces when possible. 